Good morning, Great Chance. How are you guys doing this morning? So, welcome to this physics lesson. We are looking at atmospheric pressure. Atmospheric pressure, bearing in mind that in lesson 15, we were again looking at pressure and we talked about how we calculate pressure uh, using the formula P is equal to F over A and also pressure in liquids, pressure in liquids, how you then also have to factor in the concepts of density, the concepts of density. As I promised at the end of this lesson, there they are questions. There are questions that are there, so on the PDF you will see that there are these three questions that I will need you guys to submit on Friday the 26th of June. Okay, so I will try to be very not very quick, but I'll just try to go through most of these concepts because I believe that you know them already because we talked about them or you talked about them at whichever school you were at in grade 9. In grade 9, you talked about these things. So the main thing that we, we know that we have atmospheric pressure, which is the pressure that is acting down on us right now as we are sitting or standing wherever it is we are standing. And the only reason why we don't get to feel all this pressure is because our bodies have adapted to it. That's the only reason why we don't feel it. Otherwise, it would actually crush us to a pulp. But we have adapted to it, so we don't feel it anymore. So now, I put in a subheading. The subheading says, effect of altitude change on atmospheric pressure. So you observe that if you go to places that have high altitude or places that have very low altitude, the, the pressure is, the atmospheric pressure is going to be different. It's going to be different. So if we look at the atmosphere, right, if we look at the atmosphere, we know that the atmosphere is divided into five layers. This is, most of you guys do geography, yes? And you did geography again last year. So we found that there were these five layers of the atmosphere troposphere, stratosphere, you can read for yourself, that's why you have eyes. But effectively, as you go up these layers, the atmospheric pressure decreases, okay? The atmospheric pressure decreases as you go up. This is going very high up in terms of altitude. But also on the ground level, also on the ground level, there are other places on the Earth's surface which are much higher than other places. So as you go towards sea level, that's why there is this thing called height above sea level, something called height above sea level. And you will find that pressure is obviously high at the troposphere, depending on where you are on the troposphere, okay, on the Earth's surface. So if you were to go to a place where the because the higher you go, the less pressure there is. So if you were to go to a place where you would say it's very low in terms of altitude, it's very height above sea level, is very low, you will feel that the pressure there, the atmospheric pressure will be much, much more. And you actually feel it if you were to go to one of those places. Uh, I think if you were to go to the coast, uh, if you were to go to places like Walvish Bay, uh, which are their height above sea level is very low because they're close to the ocean, yes? So you wouldn't want to go there now, obviously, because of the things that are there. But if you were to go there, the pressure, the atmospheric pressure, you would actually feel the difference. If you are used to staying at places where we have, where the height above sea level is much higher, like here in the north or in other countries, like in Zimbabwe, the, the, the height above sea level is just so much higher that when we go to places that are very close to the ocean, I, you can feel, I can feel that the, the pressure here is actually different from what I am used to. So there are these effects of altitude on, on pressure, and then there are effects on things like boiling points and melting points, because the the higher the pressure, okay, 
the higher the pressure, let's look at this final point. If the atmospheric pressure is very low, then the temperature, the boiling point, is going to be very low. So it means that if you were to go to a place, as you go, if you were to go into space, as you leave the Earth's surface, and you were to go, uh, let's say, to the mesosphere or to the thermosphere, you will find that the boiling point of substances, let's just give the general boiling point of water, would be much lower, right, because of the reduced atmospheric pressure. Okay, so just pause the video to just um, ingest, digest, and assimilate the information that you have received so far. Okay, okay, so you also have here uh, effects of atmospheric pressure on climatic conditions, where you tell you use that low pressure is favorable for rain cloud formations. Low pressure is generally associated with rain. High pressure is responsible for dry air. So I'm sure that if you've been play in places where there is a high altitude, we're saying high altitude. Uh, in places with high altitude, there is low pressure. That's why there are rain clouds. There is rain cloud formation. Uh, I know. I won't speak uh, specifically for the north, but I will speak specifically for Harare and Lawayo. Those places we always have rain clouds, and not always, but. We know that when the moment we get towards the rainy season, you just see those cumulonimbus clouds, very big clouds, right? Why? Because the, the lower pressure that is there supports the formation of those cumulonimbus clouds, okay? So I'm, I'm sure uh, Tuthi or someone else who stays in, in El Nazi, those are the people that I know who stay in close to the coast. They will tell us, hopefully, in the lesson uh, about cloud formations there, if there are, there's a prevalence of cumulonimbus clouds there, or it's just those like cirrus clouds, those whispery clouds, the small ones. Okay? But what we also have here are instruments that are used for measuring atmospheric pressure. You have the mercury barometer, which Tuna mentioned in the previous lesson, and then I say it to Tuna, explain how the mercury barometer works, and she didn't. She didn't. She just waited for the lesson to finish and said goodbye, sir. She didn't actually explain it, right? So you can see from the diagram uh, in the notes, it's explained how it works. We explained this because you have atmospheric pressure acting down on mercury that is in a dish. So if the atmospheric pressure is acting down on the mercury, it's going to force it to go up the glass tube or to go up the mercury column, right? And this mercury column has a height of 76 centimeters, right? 76 centimeters is equivalent to 760 millimeters. And you say 760 millimeters of mercury, right? That's why the unit for uh, the mercury barometer is in mmHg, millimeters of mercury. To say how far up has this mercury gone up into this mercury column, that's where the whole thing comes from. Then the manometer, read up on the manometer. I'm not going to explain it because I explained it last year, but all of it is a concept on how pressure forces down a liquid. Now I'm explaining it, even though I didn't want How pressure forces down a liquid, okay? And you can tell by the height which the liquid rises. You almost have like, this is what we call a U-tube. This is actually what? This is, this is an N-tube because it goes like this. A YouTube is just a U, and this one goes, I'm trying to move my finger up and down the, the tube, but that's why it's called an N tube, because you can see from the shape, it will have the resemblance of an N. And then gas is being applied, you can tell you have the source of the gas, and you, you want to measure what the pressure of the gas is, and the, the distance with which uh, the liquid in the manometer rises. If it's, a, if it's mercury, if it rises, then you know you have a scale here and it's going to tell you what the pressure of the gas that you're putting in there is. Then you also have an anorate barometer, which then actually gets to, uh, this thing looks ancient. I don't know if this is what people are still using now, right? Because this looks like something like, Chris, what's his name? Christopher Columbus would have used 
when he was you going to look for new continents and stuff, right? But annual parameter, all of this is simple stuff. I know when things are simple that you guys can read and you guys are good at reading, so you can read for yourself. And I'll just ask you recall questions just to see if you read. Then the assessment, like I said, this is the assessment. Make sure that you answer these questions and you submit them alongside with the chemistry work. Yes, it doesn't matter how difficult the chemistry work was, please submit it as well. I want it, I need it, I want to mark it. Okay, so thank you guys for watching the video. I hope that was short, I hope that was brief. And you guys can go we'll and just discuss this material again in the WhatsApp lesson. Thank you very much. Smash out AC Candy Adult.